Hello, Frida Reba Darcy and Patricia O'Connor here. We have been hunkered down, I think is the term, because yesterday afternoon late, we went from kind of a little overcast day to dark skies and they got darker and darker. And then the band started rolling in. We got lots of wind and quite a bit of rain. Uh, everything's wet. All the air smells really clean. I had just watered the Ponderosa the day before. It likes to stay drier than my other trees that like to stay dry even. So normally by now it would be covered uh, by snow and as such it wouldn't be wet anything that would would be wet would freeze so i brought it in i didn't want it to get soggy also it probably is okay with the wind party but um i just didn't think it was a good time to water it because i just watered it and also it's not uh, probably fully dormant the way it would have been had it been under a foot of snow for the last month where it came from and as you can see though we're starting to see a lot of fall colors are starting to come out in my uh, cypress trees. Um, they're, yeah, they're starting to, uh, oh, you know, we got a little stuff blowing around. I think it was probably helped them that I had, that I had these guys staked up because I'm pretty sure uh, they went through the business in the last couple of days with the wind and stuff i think that was it was really whipping around and during all of that i didn't want my pines um to be soaking wet i wanted them to dry because it it wasn't it didn't fall in with my watering schedule and also i didn't want them in that much wind so those three four four pines and this guy came in during the worst of it and then i brought him back out this morning man just a little quick look here at how the uh the court bark oak is looking as i said and as i suspected i was worried that i had broken a branch over here and yesterday when i was looking at it all the leaves were all the leaves were dried and dead so i clipped it off but we are lucky and now i can just kind of give that and uh, I can put more motion into that in a minute too. And I was looking at this and wondering since it comes right out of the top, whether or not I should cut it off. But I should, I think I would like to uh, maybe bend this around a little to where this is more of the side. And then I can turn this down to where it is now after I do that. In other words, I can probably get this to come over here and do something nice for me other than that everything is looking really good on this guy it stayed right there uh it doesn't care if the wind blows or not the last time i had a really windy day some of these branches weren't that heavy yet they um they had enough leaf mass to catch the wind and bend the wires around but they didn't have uh enough leaf mass to uh to hold their own against the wind and so a couple of last time we had wind like this i saw a couple of branches it might have been this one just kind of folded around but everybody did better this time and every time i looked up this guy was getting whipped back and forth but uh, um they seem to have did they seem to have done pretty well also, I brought that that pine in. I didn't mention that earlier. But the oaks and the wisterias and the redwoods and the cypress trees and the maples, uh, we all pretty much hung out in that together. There is the little um, Japanese black pine that I... Um, repotted a few nights ago and it's doing it's doing nicely it's, as you can see it's doing nicely i just love this little tree 
think it goes there. So, um, I believe, I believe we might have another occasional sprinkle. They're saying no, though. They're saying it's done with the rain uh, for a few days at least. I'm not so sure they know, but um, I'm not so sure that I always watch it as close as I used to here. I don't expect the weather to really ever do anything to, uh, I have to worry about it being too hot. Uh, compared to what I was used to in the south, the wind here never gets that bad. The rain here never really gets that sideways. And um, it's relative. A couple of years here, and you feel like it's cold, just like just like when you lived in colder places. But I know it doesn't really get very cold here. I should probably make a decision. I've got way too many branches right in here. Well, that'll cause a problem. But uh, probably clip the probably clip this one and. And, and then see what, I don't know, I don't want to get locked into anything. I don't want one of these to grow out. This side is a little, this side is a little lacking. And this side has got a little much. Um, pow. That limb is bigger than that one. Get rid of that one and make, and leave this one. That's just kind of how yeah, I think it thinks, but I don't have to do anything right now. I'll probably wait until everything turns yellow. If it's doing any photosynthesis and storing any energy, I'm going to let it do that. But during the last couple of days, the amount of uh, yellow that has enveloped the uh, that has enveloped the photograph there or or the or the, the picture in that cypress bundle is just really increased. You can start to really see those those pretty yellow colors come out. Now the uh, the cork bark will probably look about like that uh, all winter, as will uh, as will the ponderosa, the wisteria. The uh, oh, it got a little. It looks a little. It looks a little whipped up from yesterday. I think I seem to recall this having. A, a more wraparound look to it. Maybe uh, it's probably okay. But we're about done with this round of leaves for it this year. Um, and the trident maple is done this year. It's just doing a little second flush of leaves, but they've just about done done there. We just kind of hang out here in the, uh, it's 50, it's 40, it's 70, it's 50 at 70, it's 50 at 70. It kind of does that in California and things start turning fallish, but then they still will have some green on them and then we'll still get some good out of that uh, until some years, some years we actually only get maybe a month or so of what really feels like, of what really feels like uh, winter. And the trees look like that as well. Like it's so kind of have to kind of have to worry about uh, your trees overwintering correctly here, where it's where it's nice, where I say it's nice anyway. So that is our. Um, that is our catch up on what's been going on. It's just kind of uh, rare that we have a weather event like we had yesterday, but it just kind of came up uh, and then, but then it just rained and rained and rained. It just went on like that all night. It was really good sleeping weather, but um, now everything smells so clear and um, clean. The air is just really, really fresh smelling and everything just looks like it's kind of reaching out to breathe all that up and everything just kind of has a fresh look about it so also here's a here's something to possibly think about 
If you're new to bonsai, in spring, when you see all of those things coming up and you get so excited and you think, or maybe you're driving around or just maybe you're just out in your travels and you see things somewhere and you think, wow, that would make an excellent bonsai. You're so impressed by what nature has done to that when it's green and when it's lush. And that is as much as when you, uh, that may be, um, it might be a spring day or something like that when you really start to notice how beautiful everything looks, that it makes you um, want to collect something and, be, and have it be a part of your home and uh, be responsible for making it look good and being able to make some decisions that, um, that carry it forward and all. But when it comes down to it, for almost all of those trees, we are only now in the time of the year where those could be collected. Um, so yeah, when everything here starts to slow down, all of that stuff that you so wanted to try to get away with in the spring and summer, it's time. Pick out something, pick out something that you've wanted. Think about where it might be. Think about where you might could go out and um, and collect a tree that wouldn't, uh, you know, I wouldn't necessarily take a tree that's going to take a living tree away from a community. I would think in those terms. But somewhere, somebody is about to turn a piece of land into some sort of parking lot or project, or somewhere. Um, there is a place where it's absolutely, you can even, just like a fishing permit, you can even go to uh, some forestry services or, or uh, places like that and get a permit to go in a certain area and collect a certain number of trees. And when you do it that way, you will never have to feel rushed or like you have to do anything um, in a hurry, but you can take your time and you can really enjoy the process of uh, being out in nature and you won't find yourself flailing um, against it. And uh, But anyway, if I had anything to remind the newbie of, all of those things that you wanted to do all spring and summer and uh, everybody kept going, no, no, don't, don't do it now. It's the wrong time of year. Don't do it now. It's the wrong, but you wanted to anyway, because now's the time. Now's the time. Uh, it's so the wrong time for so many other cool things, but it's so the right time time for uh, for collecting trees. And, uh, so yeah, thank you all so much for watching, and uh, I am really enjoying our blustery weather today. It would be a great day to go out and take some black and white photography and get some really good um, exposures on a day like today. But uh, it's cool and the wind is blowing and it just kind of makes you glad to be alive and stuff. It's just nice to have this after, you know, uh, same old, same old. It's nice to get things mixed up a little. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, thank you so much for watching.